All right, welcome everybody to our next uh, seminar on Life Insurance 101. Uh, today's deal is just how to kind of position life with every client. You know, if you think about the world um, and the probability of risk, right? And, and I talk about this a lot with people. We're all afraid of being struck by lightning. We're afraid of our car being stolen. But those are really, really low probability uh, things that happen. You know, there's about a one in 10,000 chance of being struck by lightning, and there's a one in a thousand chance of your car being stolen. But we, we prepare or fret those things. But the, the one thing we know is going to happen is there's a one, you know, a hundred out of a hundred chance of us uh, dying at some point. We just don't know when, when it is. And so, you know, it, we, we tend to focus on selling property, cash insurance, car insurance, homeowners insurance, things to people because they're worried about those things. The reality is, from my perspective, I think the easiest sale is selling life insurance because it's the highest probability negative consequence could ha happen to somebody that's living on this planet. Um, and a lot of that, uh, from y'all's perspective, is you, you really have to get comfortable with that that's the fact. And so whether people realize it or not, everyone pretty much has a need uh, for life insurance or at least a need to have a discussion about what's going to happen uh, uh, when, when they die. Not, not if they die, but w when they die, right? You can do ifs on their car insurance or ifs on their house insurance, but just pretty much when you pass away, what kind of what's the plan? So... Quick coverage about our, our firm, Essential Markets. We're basically a platform to enable uh, or empower independent agents to have access to innovative new markets and industry experts to help them uh, grow their businesses. You guys have probably uh, know the players here. It's me as the CEO of our company, Brad Sorensen, our Chief Information Officer, and Justin Valenzuela, and then our Chairman, David Hollingsworth. We've got a lot of experience teaching and helping agents be successful in this space, and, and we're happy to answer your questions and help you you really want to do that, uh, we'll, we'll, we're happy to help you be successful here. So the first question you ask is, what does life insurance do, right? Life insurance can buy time by creating cash. It can provide future financial freedom, uh, provide uh, for college education. It can pay off the mortgage on your home, it can provide money uh, for, a pa for a parent to stay home if uh, the, the breadwinner uh, passes away, provide an un unencumbered business to a, a uh, to a grieving family or a surviving business partner, and it can provide retirement for for a saving spouse. So last time we were together, we kind of talked about what life insurance uh, does or what it did. And today, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're going uh, through some of these uh, examples of, of what it uh, does again versus what it is. And when you're talking to people, you really have to position it from these perspectives. Uh, to get them to understand it, because when they think of it just as life insurance, they probably will not buy it. But if you if you position it from what trying to solve this problem, you will have much better uh, success doing that, right? So if you're the the couple saving or, or wanting to save for uh, their kid's college education, you know maybe the solution to to, to saving a few dollars uh, a month for that is to buy a life insurance policy, so that something happens to the parents, the college education is 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 surely funded. Maybe it pays off the mortgage so that the family can stay in the house. You guys all know these things, but when, when you're thinking of questions to ask people, don't ask them about the life insurance. Ask them, you know, if one of you passed away, how would you pay the mortgage on the house? So you ask them those kind of questions and get them to think about those things versus thinking about uh, what life insurance is. Some people, you know, wealthy people may have the assets to pay off the house already saved or something of that, in that nature. That's a very, very small percentage of the population. Uh, you know, it's one or two percent of the population that has that kind of money. The, the, the rest of us are just uh, all grinding or what I call scratching at a different level to try to meet pay our bills and, and make our dreams uh, come true. So, you know, life insurance isn't for the people who die, it's for the people who live. This is a quote from the, the, the Life Insurance uh, Foundation for Education. You know, th these guys uh, th th uh, support a website called life, lifehappens.org. There's a lot of good tools on that site about learning about what life insurance does for the people who live. And if you've never delivered a, a, a death check, if you're new to the business and you haven't had that opportunity to do that yet, going and watching that, that video or some of the videos or reading some examples is a great way to see what it does for the people who actually live. And uh, I can tell you being a, an agent for, uh, for over 30 years that death does change people, right? It, it, it creates a huge impact, a huge void in people's lives. 
And I'm not suggesting that that money can solve all those problems, but it does take a lot of stress off of the family if the funds are there in place to make sure that they, they can take care of the situation at hand when somebody departs the earth in an in a untimely uh, manner. So these are kind of some things that, that people don't think about, but many clients have fear when they uh, uh, when it comes to life insurance. And then this is no different than anything else that we get the removal started on in life. You know, you, you'll hear people telling stories about different things and then you'll figure out, man, that was all blown out of proportion. Same thing happens with, with, with life insurance, right? Most people think life insurance is too expensive. They're, they believe they can't afford it. So the reason they don't ask someone to propose it to them is because they can't afford it. So they think it's too expensive. 73% of the population believes it's five to seven times more expensive than it actually is. So if you think about that, so if, you, if you're if you going to offer somebody a $20 a month term life insurance policy, they're thinking it's what? $140 a month. They think they can't afford it. So you, you really have to solve that problem by what I like to advise uh, agents, new agents to do and, and young people in the business is, is to use a, a what I call a throw down proposal, right? Go ahead and create a hundred thousand, a two hundred thousand, a million dollar proposal, carry it around in your in your briefcase or your satchel or your purse or whatever you your backpack, whatever you use to carry your business stuff in, and just lay it out there in front of them and say, look, you know, a 35 year old male a uh, non non tobacco is is you know twelve dollars a month for 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 five hundred thousand dollars of coverage or whatever the number is, and they'll go. I didn't I didn't know it was that cheap. How much is two million? Is what'll happen when they actually see the price. The the next one is what I call high pressure sales tactics. They they've got a perception about us as as life insurance agents that we're gonna that we're gonna twist their arm and, and try to convince them to do it. All of you know that's not what happens. It's not like a used car sale or something of that nature. You, you, you usually sit down with that client and you figure out what their wants and hopes and needs and desires are. And then you, you try to come up with a solution that meets their budget and, and tries to fulfill that dream. But their perception is that it's going to be a high pressure sales tactic. That's why they're not asking you. So when you look at these stats, think of ways you can combat it, right? So I gave you an example of the first one, right? Which is to use the throwdown proposal or show them. On the second one, don't be high pressure. Hey, well, I'm here to help you plan for your future. I'm here to solve a problem. It's your decision. You can make it in your time, things, uh, uh, things of that nature to, to take that fear away from them. Most people have other financial priorities, right? Starbucks coffee and, and uh, eating out, eating dinner out. <laughs> Uh, tomorrow night is more important than spending 10 or 15 or 20 or $100 a month on, on their life insurance. And, and your job uh, as, a, as a good advisor is to make, to get them aware of the fact that there's so many things that can go wrong because they don't have this funded, that they need to allocate some of those resources to other things. But they stick their head in the sand based on that. And remember, these statistics are from them it's not my guess at that. These are when you interview clients, this is what they say. I've got other priorities that are more important than life insurance. So how do you combat that? You, you probably ask them and get them to realize that 100 out of 100 of us die. And that's probably should be your number one priority, right? The foundation of your financial plan should be uh, basic life insurance to cover those the, the needs or, and things that they have to have. They, next thing they think, about half of them think it's difficult to decide the type to buy. What I might tell you um, on the difficult to decide to buy is that maybe you simplify your yeah. presentation. So if you simplify your presentation, then that takes that fear away from them, right? So if you're going in there, you know, the insurance companies require that we, we hand out these illustrations and things of that nature. You have to give those illustrations to people for, for compliance, but maybe you give a simple explanation of, of how that works and 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 not give them too many options because you can just use them and they're like man i really want to buy permanent insurance but i can't afford permanent insurance so maybe in your initial interview you have a discussion around their budget and what they can afford and you explain how term insurance works and you only bring that option back right and and instead of bringing back four or five or six different you know index universal life a regular universal life and that, and, and I think a lot of agents bring all those those tools to the meeting because they're, you know, as agents, we're excited about the different tools and different ways we can we can solve this problem for the client. 
and that, and the reality is that just uh, that's a fear they have of making the decision of which one they they would want to buy. Hey, Warren, um, real, real yes. quick, one, one of the, the uh, requests we have had from agencies, if we've talked to them, is we will probably do a webinar around how to position the various products, right? Th this yes. is way more around the initial conversation, but some of you may be sitting there going, look, maybe I have a hard time of recommending what my clients want. We are going to do a future webinar about the different products and how they're best positioned. Yeah, H happy to have a conversation about that. And what I'm giving you today is, is once you get all those tools, the last thing you want to do is go and vomit all of that information <laughs> on your client, because remember, this is their fears of the interaction, right? So you're going to have to, as you get those skill sets built, you have to kind of rein it in and slow it down and go, wait a minute. Okay, I've interviewed them. I think the term insurance solution is going to solve the problem. I think the, the $25,000 burial policy is going to solve the problem. I'm just going to take that to the, to the meeting and present it to them. Uh, and if you, if you do, if they've asked you for multiple options, maybe you take two. You, know, you don't take five options. You just take two to kind of keep it simple, just based on uh, managing the client's fears. Um, the moments of truth, this is kind of the triggers uh, from prompting people to purchase life insurance. And, and um, life events are the keys to that. We've all, we've all experienced this ourselves, right? Some, something happens to one of our friends, we have a baby, we buy something or whatever, and we think, I need to update my insurance plan. Same thing happens here, right? So you, you have a birth, a new home, things of that nature. So these are good times for you to ask those people, hey man, I'm, I'm, you know, congratulations on your new baby, congratulations on the wedding or whatever. I'm just curious if you guys have thought about your plan, right? Th that's the simple question. And, and when you ask that question about what your plan is, which we're gonna dig into that here in a minute, that changes the conversation from, do you have life insurance to a, something that's more, more deeper and, and uh, uh, more meaningful to the client? Uh, um, so the, what we call intervention is, you know, the, so, something else has created the need, right? A family member passes away, a family member gets cancer. There's some, some thing happens on the other side uh, in their life and, and then that uh, makes it happen to initiate the need. Um, trusted advisor, that's us going out and asking the, asking the, just asking the question, right? I've already told you that a hundred out of a hundred of us die. So every, we, 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 probably is our job, right? To ask every person we, we, we interact with what their plan is uh, uh, for the day that they depart uh, uh, this earth. And then um, the, the last one is, is life experience, which the life experience comes into the intervention piece, but over time, as you typically age, you become more wise or more aware of the fact that you're probably, uh, you're, you're not immortal. Like when you're 20 years old, you don't think something is going to happen to you. When you're 50 years old, your bones start creaking. And when you're 70 years old, you're thinking, man, um, I, I need to make sure my family's taken care of if something uh, happens to me. The next thing to think about is that people buy on emotion. Uh, I always tell the, the, the joke that facts, facts tell and stories sell. And, and it's very easy in the life insurance business to, to, to try to sell on the product features or the technical aspects of the policy. And that's not why people buy. People buy on emotion. They buy on the story or what the problem it's going to solve versus the, the ledger or the, the, the technical features of the product. You may be excited about the technical features of the product because you like insurance and like how it works. Just remember that, that most of your consumers don't have that bias and they're just going to be thinking about how, to, how does it affect me emotionally? How is this going to impact my loved ones if I make this decision to buy this product? Um, so when, when you're doing this, you know, passion stirs uh, emotion up. You must be passionate about what you do to bring emotion to the table. This is an important thing. If you don't like ins life insurance, if you're not excited about um, what it does for people, then you're probably going to have a hard time getting people to buy it, right? you don't believe in it, you're not going to get them to believe in it. The next one here is get people emotional about their needs and wants and they'll buy from you. And I'd like to just kind of open the dialogue up here if anybody has an idea. How can you get someone else emotional about their needs and wants? It, it, how, how, can, how can you, in a conversation, get them emotional? Start talking about their children. Ah, yeah, there you go. so there you go, Brian. So 
you know, you, you ask them a question about their, their their children, you ask them a question about their family, and they'll 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 change from technical to emotional. Great great example, simple but uh, very great example, uh, right? Um, and then the next piece here is conviction makes you convincing, right? If you believe in it, they're going to believe in it. If you don't believe in it, they won't believe. And I, 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 I you know, go back to the used car thing. It, it, uh, lack of convention is like a cheap suit, uh, right? Uh, um, strong conviction is like a very nice, well-dressed uh, person. If you can think. Facts tell, stories sell. Um, so if you don't have a story, you can go watch that uh, lifehappens.org and see some stories about it. You can talk to other people that have insurance experience uh, and, and seeing the magic or the mystery of life insurance. Borrow their story. You don't have to lie and, and make it your, uh, yours. You can say a client. You can say uh, uh, this happened to an associate uh, of mine's client. You can set the story up so you can tell it and then uh, give the example to the customer so that they understand how the insurance uh, works or what it does versus what it is. When does someone want life insurance? Anybody have a, a thought on this one? Right before they pass away. <laughs> That's right, Brian. They they call you. I mean, I've, I they, they always call when they've been diagnosed with a terminal illness or something of that nature saying, can I get some coverage or, or whatever? And that goes back to the last point. That's a story you should tell. You know, when mm -hmm. someone says, you know, I don't have time for this or whatever, you should see, you know, it's interesting that you say you don't have time because I took a phone call last week or I had an associate that got a phone call recently and the client was just diagnosed with terminal cancer and they're trying to buy life insurance and they're no longer um, able to get it. Wouldn't it make sense for you to, to go ahead and, and solve this problem today before you got some bad advice or some bad news like my friends, uh, my, my friend just did? Um, but um, you know, I can tell you that their families always want it after a loved one dies. I recently had, I'll give you a great, a great story. I had a client, uh, uh, it's a, it's a friend of a friend. It's not, not, not a customer. Um, they called me looking for, for help, but the, their, their husband was electrocuted on a job site. Um, so we, I was trying to help them explain how workers comp would work because they didn't have any life insurance and what that would do for him because of his, he was uh, injured on a job site. Uh, sad part of the story is she wrote me an email a few days later saying that, hey, they found uh, drugs in his blood and workers' comp is denying the death claim. And it's an automatic decline if you've got uh, uh, drugs in your blood, right? That Had we bought sold him life insurance policy, it wouldn't have had a qualification for that and we would, would, have, would have been able to protect his family. But because we depended on a property casualty product to pay the, for the, the, the life insurance, right? Uh, it didn't it didn't work the way uh, the family thought it was going to work. So lots of gotchas there where you, where you all know if you've got a good life insurance policy in place, it'll pay no matter what the cause of death. Is. Uh, so you, you guys know all these things, right? Uh, these are when people want to buy it. And and usually in many cases, it's too late. Right. So it's your job. It's your responsibility to, to make them aware of these kind of uh, things and um, uh, make them take advantage of it, which is the last point when they tip they'll 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 also want to buy it when they understand what it means and does. So if you if you if you're on a quest, if you're passionate, you have conviction to do that, you can actually get them to to realize it and use stories about other clients that you know or other situations that you can do. So I just told you the story today about the workers' compensation thing. You can take that story, make it your own. It's it, it has happened and you can tell to, you know, I, I know uh, I know of a, a, a some a guy that was working on a job site. He got electrocuted uh, by accident and workers comp didn't pay his claim. Don't have to say it's your customer, your thing. You just know the story now. So wouldn't you know, wouldn't you like to be covered if that happened to somebody in your family? Right. We don't we don't know what happened. You know, th this guy could have had, you know, could have been his birthday on Sunday and he's, and, you know, I'm making it up, he smokes some weed with his friends and goes to work the next day. It, it, he's not high at work, but he, he, he gets electrocuted by, by it's truly an accident. And now they uh, deny the claim because of, because of there's, there's marijuana in his blood system. Right. So it's just not, not, not a good situation for the family. Um, so how do you start the conversation? Right. Um, 
let, let's open the microphones up here and let, let's ask the group, you know, what, what are some common ways you all ask the question? Uh, well, I use the one that you're about to, to to bring out here in a minute, but some of the things that I've heard before is uh, where do you have life insurance outside of work? I think that's a common one that's that's used in the industry. But I'd be curious to hear from some other people in here. I know there's there's lots of people with lots of experience. Anybody else have one? I always ask the question under their on their auto policy uh, when it gets down to the medical funeral benefits. Okay. Does that work for you, Brian? All the time. Ask him why are they paying for it on their auto policy? They plan on dying in an auto accident. Ah. And then it opens up the question. Where do you nice. have your life insurance? <laughs> yeah, I, I like it. Nice. That's me too. Uh, so normally what we do is we always do on your side reviews um, for our current clients. We just, you know, always ask the question, who do you currently have your life insurance with? So I know you said that, but, you know, that can be used not just on your current clients, but you bump into somebody in person across the gas station and say, hey, I just want to introduce myself. Just got the question, who, who do you currently have your life insurance with? That always starts to, you know, I guess that puts it on the client to either tell you who they have it with or they don't. So that's what we use. Yeah, so I, I tell you, I, I like that question, who do you have your life insurance with? But I like to take it a little bit farther than that. And this is how I make it emotional. Or this is how I make it compelling for the client. This is how I get a story uh, uh, to, uh, baked into it. I'll say, well, who do you have your life insurance with? And they'll say X, Y, Z. And I'll say, um, do, you, do you mind? Do you, do you know who the agent is? And they'll go, why, why are you asking that? I say, well, the reason I'm asking is because frequently when someone passes away, because we have their home and car insurance or we do their commercial insurance or whatever, their loved ones are looking through their paperwork and they find my business card or they find an insurance card or some document with my number on it. And they'll call me and ask me if, if, if I have your, your parents' life insurance or I'll have the person's life insurance. Um, because of that, we like to capture in our, in our CRM or in our database, um, um, we like to include in our database uh, uh, you know, that policy. So I can, if I can capture the information from you, who you have it with uh, and uh, what the policy amount is for and, and the phone number and the policy number, I'll put that in our system just in case it ever happens. And then when they tell me who the agent is or whatever, I'll say, well, is he still servicing your account? And nine out of 10 times, the agent sold the policy to him years ago. And if it's an independent agency company, not, you know, it's not farmers or state farm that the policy is with someone like that. I'll normally BOR that policy over to our agency so that I'm now in control of it. I don't make any money off that transaction, but when the policy is, needs to be converted from term to permanent, or when it if it is, uh, needs to have more premium going into it because it's a universal life policy, or maybe it's time to take the cash value and roll it into another uh, policy uh, or whatever, I'm now in control of that contract. So it's it's just an idea for you, a, a way to to make that uh, in in that conversation. In nine out of ten times, you'll capture the information, which is a great thing to do for your customer because you, you will get those phone calls. Uh, the longer you're in the business from somebody saying, hey, I, I noticed you wrote my mom and cars and uh, my mother, my mother's home and car insurance. Uh, my mom's passed away and I was just wondering if you guys had a life insurance policy. There is not like a real database that you can go to and find find these life insurance policies. Right. So you had it'd be great if somebody else uh, had that, that that document for your family. Just just an idea for you. Uh, next one is um, my favorite one. Um, uh, if you and your spouse didn't come home last night, what's your plan? This is this is truly my secret uh, uh, my secret weapon, right? Um, in in when I ask them what their plan is, I just close my mouth and listen. And they'll say, and sometimes they'll say, "What do you mean?" I'll say, "Well, who gets the kids?" And they'll say, "Well, my sister." And I'll say, "Really? The, does your sister know she's getting the kids?" How, how many people talk about this? They don't want to talk about death, right? So they, they haven't had this lady and her sister haven't had this conversation, right? Then I'll ask a question. Is there a legal document that transfers your kids to your sister? Then I'll ask the killer question, right? Does your sister have enough money to pay for her two kids to play t-ball, go to dance and do all that and pay for your two kids? Can she feed them and feed? Can she feed hers and feed yours? Right? Those are questions around what it, what, what it, where, where it goes to what it does versus what it is, right? So getting really good at this asking what their plan question is, is the key to you being successful in the life insurance business. 
It's this. It's not only the question about what's your plan. That's ask, then asking the follow up questions. At who's at, if it did you know? So, what's your plan? Right. I'll I'll just take another direction for you right here. Right. We're going to do a whole session on this concept for you guys and give you these scripts. So, but so you you have um. So what's your plan? And they start talking, and I'll go. Did you use both? Of you? I'll just kind of kind of wonder. Like give them a. I, I'm looking at my camera to see you guys because I see all the guys on the side. So I'm sorry I look away sometimes. I'm looking at you when I'm when I'm talking on the side. But I might go, wow, I just had a thought. Did you use both of your incomes to qualify for your mortgage? See what I just did to them? So I ask them what their plan is if one of them dies. And then I go, wow, did you use both of your incomes to qualify for your mortgage? What would happen if you lost your wife's income? Right. Those are ways to, to get into the conversation with by just getting them to start talking about their what their plan is and think of all of the follow up questions you can have. Right. What's your plan? Who gets the kids? Uh, is there a legal document that does it? Do they have a will? You can just start going down this road of all these questions that will take it away from a a, a what is your you know, do you have life insurance question to man? I need to solve this problem. I've got I've got some real problems here that I need I need to take care of, right? And that's where you step in. Hey, I can help you. I've got a friend that can draft your will for you. I I can take care of funding this with a life insurance policy. I can I can help you get this this uh, issue that I've just uncovered solved. Any hey, questions Warren, on that one, Warren? Before you leave that, I know a lot of times when we roll this out, um, and I know you personally have had it. You you if you ask me what's my plan, and I go. Hey, I, I've got plenty of life insurance. How, how do you pivot on that? I didn't ask you if you had life insurance, Brad. Um, I'm just curious. Uh, I, I know you have uh, two kids, and um, what's the plan? How, you know, is your is your wife going to take the kids because you guys are divorced? Is there a, a legal issue there? What what's going on there? Have you guys had this discussion? Right. I just. Yeah. I just take it. I, I just I didn't ask you if you had life insurance. This wasn't a life insurance question, Mr. Customer. This was a planning question, right? And and it's it's it, it it's so funny because nobody's very few of us plan for our death. We don't. And and the sad part about it is, and I do this to young people all the time. And you know, you'll get a 22 year old or 24 year old that's fresh out of college. You'll ask them this question, and they'll go, "I don't have any stuff, man." I don't have to. I don't have to worry about. I don't, you know, I don't have anything. I live in an apartment. I have everything. And I'll go. You don't think your mother's going to unwind your crap? And they'll go. What are you talking about? I said, when you die, person that 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 car that you owe money on, they're going to start calling your mom, asking them for the payment on that car, or they're going to want to repossess the car or whatever. The person you rented the apartment from, they're going to want you to keep paying the lease until the lease is expired. Someone has to finish your life on on earth they have to wind they have to wind up your affairs right wouldn't you like to leave your mom ten thousand dollars to wind up your affairs or 25 if you don't have anything right your mom you're going to make your mom pay for your funeral that, that though and it's easier with those people because they have you can just punch them right in the face because they have no no reality of what's really going to happen right they they did they're invincible and they're they're much easier to be firm with because you can kind of grab them by the face mask and the old football vernacular and say, hey, wait a minute, you haven't thought about it, but think about it like this. Right. I mean, I, the, the, the one the one I, you know, on the same thing back to this plan, you can take it down the medical directive. You might ask them, well, do you want to be on life support or would you want your parents to pull the plug? I mean, people have people. We all have strong opinions about this, right? We, we all. We all know what we want for ourselves, but have we shared it with anybody? And so that's that's a medical directive question, right? That's a that's a power of attorney type thing that you give to your somebody that loves you that will make that decision for you by having that discussion. Right. And and part of this, what's your plan is having a good will in place to make sure that your wishes are are uh, solved out. If you don't have a good attorney friend, first thing you need to do in this business is find someone that can write wills for you. You should be sending them wills every week for the people you're talking to. Shouldn't be expensive. These are simple for for 99 percent of the population. They're simple documents. Shelby, you just did, did just did a will practice. It was pretty simple, wasn't it? I mean, it did a little bit of work, but you you did it. You, know, you might share with the group your experience as a young person, 25 years old, 26 years old. You just went the process of, of getting a will in, in place, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it was um, very simple and I learned a lot um, that I just didn't know if I didn't have those decisions outlined, they uh, would just be decided for me in the event that something happened to me. So that was yep. good. Awesome. All right. So what tools do you have in your toolkit? Right. These are some example uh, examples of being a consultant versus an insurance agent, right? Um, back to what I was just saying, your attorney, referral partner, wills, estates, financial planner. If your agency doesn't do financial planning, who are you going to send it to? Because when you start asking these questions, it'll come up. Well, I've got I've got some money. I don't know how to do this. My mom left me some money. I've been I want to make sure my kids get it, whatever, whatever their their goal might be. You guys all find this out when you start doing and then maybe a CPA. Uh, that you can refer business uh, uh, to also because the, the sometimes financial questions will come out of, uh, of that discussion. So other life insurance uh, approaches uh, that you can use, uh, we call this one the conditional receipt, right? This is the old idea of uh, when you like to have a policy in place, why you're why you're wanting to decide, why you qualify to decide. You guys understand when you when you if someone says, you know what, I, I'm trying to decide which one I want. I don't know which one I want. You say, great. Coolest thing about this is we can sign this thing today. We can get a conditional receipt in place so you can let, we'll get you approved for insurance. Then you can decide which policy you want to buy. You guys know you can do that, right? You could put put the term app in place uh, on them, have them sign up for it for five hundred thousand dollars. They're trying to decide whether they want the permanent policy or the term policy. Apply for the per term, uh, per term policy. Goes to your underwriting. It's approved. You can go back to them and say you can put a note on the app to the underwriter that the client is trying to decide between a permanent policy and a and a, and this apply for that come back and okay I got you approved for five hundred thousand dollars which one do you want to buy which one do you want right make sense everybody all right what's your most valuable asset this is a great uh, great question um, Devin or uh, uh, Justin, I like the way you use this one. Justin's got a great tool that he uses when he sells life insurance to customers about a money machine. Share it again. I think we talked about it last time, but I think it's a great one to remind people how to use. Yeah, it goes something like uh, Warren. If I, I, I'll, I'll role play with you, uh, Justin, if you want. Yeah, okay. So uh, so we'd be sitting down with Warren and I would say, you know, Warren, if I, uh, if I told you there was a machine in your garage that you went out on the 1st and the 15th every single month, you pulled the lever, it spit out exactly how much money you needed, to provide for your family and take care of the things that you needed and desired, how much insurance would you put on that machine? Oh, I, I, I don't know, mi millions because it's it's got it's paying me every week. Yeah, exactly. And so that machine is you, Warren. You're you're that machine for your family, for your business, for the people that work for you. Uh, you know, people rely on you, and and you know, for you to maintain that income. So back to the what's your most valuable asset? It's your income. Uh, we got to get that protected and you, you're the machine for your family and your operation. So here's the deal with this one, ladies and gentlemen. I think all of you think that's probably cheesy. That, you know, you think uh, that's kind of a cheesy way to, to get to this. The reality is it's, it, it is a little cheesy, but the clients relate to it. You, you, most of us will try to take a technical approach to this problem. We'll try to take the life insurance illustration in there and show them the, the, the reason why they should buy it versus the, the this concept that Justin just gave you, which they can relate to. R remember, the average person in our country is is educated at about an eighth grade grade or reads or comprehends at about an eighth grade level. And you might, you know, presenting them a life insurance illustration is probably, you know, at a college or, or, or above level of, of intellect to understand <clears throat> what is on that document. And I think 90 percent of the population or more are paycheck to paycheck. Right. So it really relates. Yeah. They, they can they can relate to that example. Exactly right. So if you if if you knew you would die tomorrow, how much life insurance would you buy today? That's a, another great question, right? So back to all these different, we're just kind of feeding these these things to you in different ways, so you can pick one that resonates with you, right? If you knew you would die tomorrow, how much life insurance would you buy today? I mean, I'd buy as much as I could afford, right? If you were hit by a drunk driver, how much would your family sue them for? I love this question when people, when so may, maybe you've, you've you've got somebody and they they've decided to buy some life insurance from you and, and you think it's a lot lower than what they should be having. You can do the same thing that I did, uh, kind of the reaction I did earlier. You can just go, hey, 
uh, Justin, I was just thinking, you know, if you got hit by a drunk driver, how much do you think your family would sue and, 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 and killed? How much do you think your family would sue them for? They'll say millions. Everyone says millions. And say, I, I'm, I'm just curious, you're only buying $100,000 of life insurance, but, you, but you're, you're telling me your family thinks you're worth millions. Yeah, Warren, I took this one from an agent that I used to work with in Southern California, and they would pull out uh, obituaries and show ages, right, that it's not all elderly people that are passing away. And then they would pull out judgments specifically for drunken driving, which would be three, four, five, seven million dollar uh, fatality judgments. And so I think a lot of times, you know, people think a million bucks in life insurance coverage is enough, but it's why is it worth why is someone's life worth more if it's taken by somebody making a mistake? Yeah, it's an interesting concept, and, and it's your job as the agent to bring them back to reality on how that actually works. Outside of work, what type of life insurance plan do you have? You know what most people say? I don't have anything. Then, then just go in, well, why? You know, tell, tell, tell me why. Then, then use the other tools we've talked about today to get the dialogue going. Um, sell the next step. Um, re remember that all clients' uh, progress is uh, uh, progress through the system differently. And the thing to think about here um, is all of our personalities are different, right? Uh, and there's like supposed to be 16 different personalities. So you can't just walk them through your same process over and over again. You have to be flexible, what I call flex. You have to flex to kind of their style, but keep them on track, right? So maybe one, one person, it's a six-step process. The other person it was an eight step process and some other people might be a two step process. They just like, hey, I want to do it. Where do I sign? Right. So uh, you, but but don't if you if you try to jam them all down the same process, you'll probably lose clients and that because you're not flexing to their style. Um, gain buy in and commitment to move forward. This is a tool that that um, I use a lot and, and I call it the yellow pad. And if you will, um, when, when someone tells you they want to move forward, you know, we need to talk about that. You know, you're, you're having a cup of coffee with them like, man, we really need to solve this problem. And, and so, you, so you say, OK, I'm going to put you on my follow up list. So you, you put them and you know, I make a big deal out of putting them on their follow up list. I'll take my phone out and I'll type it in. If you have if you if you have a journal that you keep your notes in or whatever or, or a day timer or whatever you want to call it, write down follow up with Bill Smith or whatever the person's name is. Right. When you follow up with them the next time and they they say, you know, I'm too busy or whatever, say, okay, no problem. I'll follow up with you in a week or whatever you said. Write it down, make a note, and make sure they know you're writing it down or you're putting it in their phone or whatever. Make a big deal out of writing it in the in, in the follow-up book. On the third follow-up, when they say I'm too busy, say, hey man, I hate to be a pest about life insurance. I don't want to, I don't want to be like a pushy salesman. Is it okay if I take you off my follow-up list? The last thing I'd want to happen is for you to die on my watch when we're trying to get this done. I wouldn't be able to live with myself. Is that okay? You know what the person will do? They'll either commit to the meeting right then, or they'll tell you to take them off the list, which is great because it's no longer, you don't have to waste your time following up with them because they were a suspect instead of a prospect. Everybody follow, got that one? Yeah, that's that's right. worth the uh, the entire time we spent here, Warren. That's a huge, <laughs> huge takeaway. So if you don't take anything away, take that away. I have a, a buddy that I coach softball with. He's a large industrial salesperson. I talked to him. He's like, man, I can't get any of my prospects to just move. I've got all these orders out. They're not pulling the trigger. And so I actually told him to try that. He called me last night and said he closed five deals this week already. Just that yeah. we're on the people on mm -hmm. his list. So that's yeah. a huge one. Yeah. So next one there is to, to address concerns head on. If they tell you they're sick or or, or there's a challenge or whatever, uh, address it and, and go straight on it. Don't waffle around it or whatever, right? If you'll address the concerns head on, say, look, cancer is a problem. It's been over five years, though. We probably can find a carrier that can help you with it. You know, th 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 that's a problem, but let, let me see what I can do. Let, let, and, and this is what it's going to look like. We, we, we've got a process that we help our agents with where we We'll go shop it with the carrier, come back to you and say, hey, looks like it's going to be table what, whatever, or rate it this way and go to the customer with this and say, I've got a solution. Here, 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 uh, here, here's what's going to cost you. Right. But don't 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 take don't take the application as a non-tobacco preferred plus, And then when it gets rated. 
try to figure out how you're going to sell it to them. Because you won't, right? Um, all right, answer questions before they, uh, they're asked, right? So tell them how the process is going to work to get, to get this life insurance policy uh, issued, right? We're going to take the application today. I'm going to put the conditional receipt in place. We're going to have to spit in the cup or whatever is going to, if there's any exam required, these are the steps that will happen. I'm going to take care of it, walking you through it. If you have any questions or whatever, let me know and I'll, 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 I'll help you get it done. Don't, don't let them go off wondering what, what's next. Hey, Warren, on the side note, we were working with um, Derek's group. Um, we're, we're actually going to develop a one pager that is a client lead behind so that they can understand how the process is going to work. So there's no surprises. Cool. Something, something nice. to just help reinforce it in the process. Awesome. Yep. So just to ask, Aristotle said it best. He said what we uh, uh, repeatedly do, excellence then is not an act, but a habit. Um, people tell me all the time that they want to get in the life insurance business and, and they get in and they don't, they're not successful. And I'll ask them, are you asking every person that you meet? And they'll like, no, you know, I, I talk to two or three people a week about it. And, and I'm just like, it's, it's about 98% of the population is, uh, doesn't have, it doesn't have adequate life insurance. We are all going to die. So it, it is it is the it is the one thing we all need. Right. So just ask. Hey, man, I'm just curious if you got hit by a bus on the way home from work tonight. What's your plan? If they'll, they'll either tell you to shut up and go away or man, that's a deep question. They'll they'll start talking to you about it. All right. And then next next thing, helpful websites I talked about uh, lifehappens.org. Uh, Limra, Lifeline.org, and, and NAFER are all great places to go read, get stories, get ideas on how, how to uh, convince people to do this. And then our last slide is just, uh, if you have any questions, uh, hit Brad or uh, Justin up, they'll be happy to do it. You know, our, our, our key is relationships, helping you develop as, a, uh, as, a, as an agent, and then supporting you in your uh, generating revenue for, for life insurance. So any questions today?